Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Are criminals to be excused because they cannot overcome the circumstances which surround their behavior? Is there such a thing as an imbalance of genes or chromosomes that produces individuals who absolutely cannot help themselves? Dr. Stanton Samenauer dropped a bomb on some of the theories of criminal behavior which have been in vogue for the last couple of decades. He's a clinical research psychologist, and for 15 years, he and Dr. Samuel Yockelson, now deceased, studied theories of criminal behavior. They worked with hundreds of men who had committed almost every known imaginable type of crime. Samenau says that poor home environments, poverty, mental illness, and other psychological factors may and do contribute to criminal behavior, but they believe these factors do not produce criminals. They are convinced that the criminal is a person who has chosen to reject society and with full sanity chooses to follow the course of conduct that results in his tag as a criminal. We found, says Dr. Stanton Samenau, that the criminal is the person who rejects parents, school, and the world of work before the world rejects them. Of 255 men who were involved in the study, fewer than 5% were, in their opinion, emotionally ill. But they did find at least 52 common attributes shared by criminals, which they call the criminal personality. Some of those traits were lying, anger, ownership. The world owes him a living and he's out to collect. Uniqueness, the feeling that nobody understands him and that he is better than the rest. I have no way of knowing whether Dr. Stanton Samenau ever read a book full of profound psychological insights called the Bible, but I do know that their conclusions are in perfect agreement with what this book says about human nature and behavior. The major thesis of the Bible is that man is responsible, and because he is responsible, he is accountable. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God was Paul's analysis of the situation. There is none righteous, no, not one. All we like sheep have gone astray, wrote Isaiah. We have turned everyone to his own way. Yet from the very beginning of recorded history, it has been characteristic of human nature to try to pin the blame for human failure on circumstances or other people. The woman you put here with me, said Adam, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree and I ate it. I'm not responsible. I couldn't help it. I am sure that anyone else would have done the same thing under the same circumstances. Maybe so. Nonetheless, God not only says we are responsible, but he makes provision for our human weakness, and this is the good news of the gospel. The gospel contains two great provisions. One, the provision of God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And two, the provision of living above your old carnal nature that produces criminal behavior. That verse provision was a costly one. It required the death of God's Son, Jesus Christ, who satisfied the justice of God by paying the penalty for man's sin. God made him to be sin for us, wrote Paul to the Corinthians, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Because God does not cross the picket lines of our heart, we are the ones who must accept God's provision of forgiveness. The Bible calls it being saved or being born again. Don't be content to hide behind rationalizations. Find God's solution. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.